Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 22nd. This broadcast is from Omaha, Nebraska, actually across the river in Council Bluffs. I'm hanging around with my buddy Navy Thomas 8. First article was sent in by my buddy BC65925, also known as the Deer Slayer. This is a really cool gadget that is hoping to hit market if they can get somebody to sponsor it and I don't think they should have any trouble because this gadget is just so cool there's a video to go with it too it's called the throwable panoramic ball camera I'll put a picture up of it and it looks somewhat like a soccer ball with all kinds of cameras implanted in it and the idea is you toss it up in the air and as soon as it reaches the peak and height it snaps a picture with all of the cameras at once and what it creates is one of those kind of spherical views some of you have probably seen them in real estate ads when you click on a room and you can actually pan around and see all the way from top to bottom, all the way around. This makes that kind of picture too and some of the effects that you can create with this is just awesome because because you throw it high up in the air you can actually see things that are behind you that weren't even visible uh, for from standing on the ground and all they need is just a sponsor to, to make this uh, come to pass and I will have a link to the website which is Jonas, Jonas pfell.de and uh, I'm on the frequently asked questions site here where it answers a lot of questions about it and then I'll also put in the link to the YouTube video of the camera. Uh, next up this comes from Pulse000 and this is from the Association of Science and Technology Centers ASTC.org uh, this is also a video on YouTube about quantum levitation, but actually more than just quantum levitation. That's pretty simple. This talks about quantum flux locking. Some of you have probably seen the videos where you can take a piece of metal and then super cool it, and it can hang even upside down on a track and move back and forth. Well, this one they also have it on a rotating track, and they show how by tipping it at various angles and then pushing it around an oval type of track, it actually stays at the same orientation to the magnet. It's not a very long video, like one minute and fifteen. 56 seconds, but it's really cool about um, explaining what magnetic flux locking really is. They're talking about using it maybe in future spacecraft to be able to orient panels and walls and things like that using quantum flux locking so that it re retains its shape and its memory. You would put them in place and then they would be uh, they would stay in that place and not move. And last up this week, uh, always good for articles if I'm uh, low on articles for the week is cracked.com and this particular article is about the eight most wildly irresponsible vintage toys and I'll just give you two of them in particular and then you can look through the rest but number eight is called Gilbert glass blowing set which encourages kids to use their bare hands and experiment with glass at 1000 degrees Fahrenheit because that's the temperature that it takes to soften glass and if you look at some of these pictures of the kids handling glass and stuff like that you'll think this is a uh, it wouldn't be something, well let me just say this, it wouldn't be something you would probably give kids to uh, use unsupervised and maybe not even supervised nowadays, but just to show you uh, back years and years ago what was popular in kids' toys. And the second one I want to show you here is Atomic Energy Lab to where they actually supply you with not only uranium but also radium, which is even thousands of times more radioactive than uranium. and. Uh, if you for some reason misplace it or lose it you can uh, request uh, a replacement as long as you keep the coupon that came with the, the uh, Toy Atomic Energy Lab kit so uh, yeah kids playing with uh, radioactive energy and, and the other kit below it is uh, the same one from Gilbert like did the uh, blowing glass video they had their own uh, competing atomic energy lab and they included a little Geiger counter you could use so that after you got done playing with the uranium and the radium you could actually use the Geiger counter to detect how much radiation your body has actually been exposed to and how radioactive your body is after playing with your radioactive elements so if you get a chance check this out on cracked.com it's called the eight most wildly irresponsible vintage toys so that's about it for this week on the road. This is kind of a short one because I am busy with meetups and all kinds of uh, good times I'm having on the road. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.